Hello everybody, this is Amin from StoryChinger.com and before we start this episode of Let's Talk About a little preamble. So we had a guest come onto the show uh, f- uh, and she's in Singapore um, and obviously we have to do it remotely and that involves a number of software and equipment and inevitably something went wrong. Uh, we had a technical issue uh, that we were not aware of during the shoot and that resulted in poor audio and video quality. Uh, it's not uh, it's not something that we're happy with, but the team uh, worked really hard to fix it, and I think it's up to a quality that's I guess it's okay. So to our podcast listeners, I would just uh, want to apologize if the audio quality is not up to the standard that we usually put out. If you'd like, we put uh, we've we've put some subtitling in the video of this episode, and you can watch that on our on our YouTube channel. And once again, I just want to apologize for the poor audio and video quality in this episode. But I think the information presented is super useful and I think you guys should watch it. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching and once again, really apologize on the poor audio and video quality. All right, guys, enjoy the show. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. This is me, Amin. And this is Alex. And in this episode, what's up with WhatsApp? So obviously, you guys are using WhatsApp. Everybody's using WhatsApp. And I'm pretty sure recently, all of you have been getting messages about, uh, them, uh, about them asking you to agree on the new terms and conditions. And you've heard the news, right? If you don't agree to the terms and conditions... Uh, something's going to happen on the 8th of February. And then after that, there was like a whole uproar of of of, of people saying, oh, you know, this is WhatsApp is uh, taking all your private data and they're going to sell it off to Facebook. And and then then that triggered like a call for, for people to move from WhatsApp to other platforms like Telegram and Signal, which are their competitors. So the question is, uh, is it true that WhatsApp is collecting all this data and selling it off? And can people, can, uh, and what happens after the 8th of February? Will people be able to like read your messages? And is WhatsApp going to be less secure and less private if you agree to the terms and conditions? And is your privacy and security compromised if you continue to use WhatsApp in the future after the new terms, terms and conditions come in? All right, so what do you think? Well, if the, the main thing about this issue is about the new terms and also the new privacy updates. Mm. So this will take into effect as soon as you agree by the 8th of February. Mm. So if you look at the most of the new reporting, news reporting and you look into the actual terms itself, mm. you notice that it's actually much longer than the previous one. Mm. And the gist of it is two things. Mm. The first one will be more connectivity with Facebook. So there's more integration involved mm. based on the terms and conditions. So they're going to use WhatsApp to improve the services, the experience onto Facebook mm. and the second part is the privacy privacy stuff mm. so from the looks of it uh, they are collecting more data mm. like they're getting your phone number and all that stuff and this will be shared across Facebook it's something that that is a given that this information is like quite basic mm. but the fact is that this is new in the mm. terms of conditions so people have this fear that Facebook is getting more access to your personal data mm. on WhatsApp mm. and the biggest question of all is is it still safe to use WhatsApp? Is it still encrypted? So mm. those are the key concerns. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think? I just wanted to, actually I wanted to ask you what do you think? I mean, uh, the thing, the thing, the thing that annoys me the most is is like this, right? So, uh, first of all, I bet you nobody reads the terms and conditions. Uh, number some, two, some of them already accepted already. <laughs> <laughs> I've accepted it. I didn't even read really? it. Really? It's like what people say, right? You know, uh, saying yes, you agree to the terms and conditions. Is the biggest lie on the internet because nobody reads the terms and conditions. Everybody just agrees to it. Because I've been, I've been postponing, keep pressing the X button at the top. I've been postponing that. Why? Why have you been postponing? It? Because I want to fully understand first before I get into it. Because for me, this is a big change because I I don't recall WhatsApp being so invasive about a new terms update. So this that's what makes me more cautious. Yeah, this is uh, I agree. This is the first time WhatsApp put like an ultimatum. Not like an ultimatum, like okay, it is an ultimatum. It's like agree to the terms and conditions or not be able to use WhatsApp. They did previously before, but it doesn't feel was as threatened. Yeah. Oh, this was like the one dollar thing, right? Or... I can't remember. There's a few do- a few a few updates back. I remember there's the update as well that mm-hmm. you need to agree before you can use. Mm-hmm. But this one feels somewhat more uh critical because it touches on 
on integration and mm. also this privacy update. So mm. that's the huge concern before I accept. Okay, well, to answer the question, I mean, to really understand what's going on, we've reached out to WhatsApp. And guess what? They've agreed to speak to us. And we have uh, the communications director of WhatsApp, uh, Sravanti Dev. And she's going to speak to us she online uh, and to like, answer, answer all our questions. questions that we have. So, uh, hello, Sravanti. How are you? I'm well. Thank you very much for inviting me to join you today. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be with us. Uh, okay, so WhatsApp is like the only thing people are talking about right now, despite whatever that's going on around the world. Obviously, there has been a lot of call for everybody to move out from WhatsApp to, to your competitors like Signal and, and, and Telegram. Um, so we want to know what's going on actually. Uh, so sure. I guess I guess my first question is, what's up with the terms and conditions? Uh, that, that, that everybody has to accept? Sure, sure. It, it's a really good question, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share accurate information because I know people are hearing lots of different things from lots of different sources. So, um, so first of all, thank you. You know, simply put, the policy change that we've introduced is all about messages that consumers send to businesses that they like speaking to on WhatsApp. Simply put, that is all what this policy is about. As you may know, you yourselves might be talking to businesses, millions of people around the world use WhatsApp to message with their favorite people um, on WhatsApp. This is something consumers like to ask, and especially during the pandemic, WhatsApp has been lifeline to talk to your loved ones, your family and friends, your colleagues, but also to business. And WhatsApp has also played a role in helping businesses become digital, continue their services when um, they have had to close their retail locations or be unable to do their business. Um, to give you some you know, broad information, uh, WhatsApp has consumer products, but also business products. Uh, the consumer app that most people use is completely free. We also have the WhatsApp business app which is also free and is used by small businesses. And then we have the WhatsApp business API, which is a paid product that the WhatsApp makes money today, um, and that is used by larger businesses like airlines, banks, healthcare, telcos. So in this instance, with this privacy policy, it only deals with messaging that are exchanged between a consumer and a WhatsApp API. Now you might ask, why is WhatsApp API account important and what does it mean? You know, what we hear from brands all the time is they love using WhatsApp because that's where they want their customers to um, contact them. And customers also like doing that. Uh, so we're giving WhatsApp um, business API um, customers the opportunity to choose to, to use a secure Facebook infrastructure um, storage service to store messages that they have between consumers and themselves. And those messages are really between consumers and the business. Neither WhatsApp, Facebook will have access to those messages. I agree, WhatsApp is like a super convenient platform. Uh, everybody uses it, uh, whether it's for work, or for business, or for, for anything in between, right? So if I understand your answer correctly, what you're saying is that the new terms and conditions affect Business users, is that correct? Well, it, it affects it affects everyone because what happens is meaning that if I, Cervanti, am a WhatsApp user, a WhatsApp user, which I am, okay, um, a and I decide to message, a non-business WhatsApp user, like a normal WhatsApp exactly, user, okay, just a normal person, like you know, both of you, uh, and let's say. Um, you know, I decide that I want to um, talk to a bank um, that I want. I have a financial transaction with, and the bank uh, uses WhatsApp. They're a WhatsApp API uh, customer. Um, so when I exchange messages with the bank, um, and if that bank decides to use Facebook server to store messages, that's what this policy is about. So you know, in that sense, this policy is global because consumers have changing needs. We may not talk to a business every day, but consumers like having the option to talk to a business um, if they need to do any work. 
Um, so I think that's the important nuance that people need to understand. I'm not forcing businesses to use uh, Facebook um, storage solution for storing messages. We want to give businesses the option to do that because it's a very easy way uh, for them to integrate WhatsApp API into their system for their customer service team. For customers, people like you and I, um, you know, we can decide at any time if we want to message with the business or if we decide not to message with the business. So, you know, the options that you have are very real time. All this policy is doing is letting you know that this will be happening on WhatsApp so that, you know, you have transparency. And the additional thing we're also doing that I really want people to understand is if let's say you do decide that you want to message with the business, um, that's an API business that is storing their um, the messages they have with customers on Facebook secure storage service, you'll see a label at the top of your WhatsApp chat each time you message with them. So you can decide at that moment uh, whether you want to continue messaging with the business or if you prefer a different communication channel. Um, you know, for businesses, right? WhatsApp is just one channel among the many channels that they use. So this label is, is, is the new feature that's going to happen uh, after, exactly. after the 8th of February? That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. Okay, I think that's, that's quite interesting. So people would know that, okay, I'm talking to a business and the business is able to store that message uh, offline in their own uh, server to, or, or whatever. Uh, I guess that adheres to standard privacy policies, right? That's correct. You know, one thing to understand in all of this is, you know, anytime you email a business, anytime you might be chatting with the business, because there's so many different methods, right, that businesses engage with customers. Um, it's normal practice for businesses to store their customers' information um, to help them service their customers better. Yeah, so I think that's the big nuance in terms of how businesses are trying to meet customer needs and customer demand in having to message with them and support that their needs. Yeah, it's like uh, the time when we use phones to call businesses, right? And and, and exactly. you get you get a you get an answer and then the answer would be okay, you know, your this call would be recorded for training purposes, blah 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 blah. So that that's, that's what's happening right now with the new terms and conditions. Then I guess the question is why is there like a hard ultimatum like agree to this or you can't use the feature or you can't use WhatsApp at all? Sure, sure. No, that's a question that you know, we have received and look, um, you know, the simple answer to put it is, you know, we um, abide by legal requirements and you know, policies of countries around the world. We're a global product. So for us, you know, it's an industry standard, um, you know, digital companies, you have legal policies in terms that you update. And so just to take a step back, you know, we announced um, these business features actually uh, late last year. Um, where we talked about businesses being able to use Facebook um, secure hosted services if they want to as they grow their business. Uh, we've also announced additional features uh, for the benefits of consumers and business. So this is something we've been talking about uh, for a few months. Um, so, you know, as we got into this year, as we're getting close to um, introducing some of those changes actually on the product, we actually wanted to give people the opportunity to understand what's happening. And again, these are, you know, legal requirements. Um, this is, you know, standard industry practice where people have an opportunity to read and understand. Uh, but, you know, we've also gotten lots of thoughtful feedback, um, you know, from people saying that they understand some of it, but they're unclear about it. So that's one of the reasons why we are really taking a lot of effort to make sure that we really focus on helping people understand the facts. Um, you know, we published an FAQ page, uh, and we're also working other ways to reach our users to help them understand because, you know, ultimately our users are a priority and we want to make sure they are very comfortable, they understand what's happening. Um, so that's where we've been really focused on doing that. Um, and we hope uh, that users will um, get to that stage. And, you know, we're continuing to evaluate the feedback um, and, and see what else we can do to support our users. What happens after 8th of uh, February? Sure. After the 8th of February, WhatsApp account will still be active. Um, so people that have accepted the new terms, they'll be able to use WhatsApp as they've always been able to use WhatsApp. 
for those users that maybe haven't accepted because they're not sure uh, they want to understand further, their account will still be active. They'll be able to receive calls and see message notifications, but they won't be able to use the full WhatsApp functionality. For example, people that want to send messages or make calls themselves, or you know, people use WhatsApp to um, you know send media, right? Stickers, emojis, um, share information. So they won't be able to use sort of the full functionality. So they'll still, um, be, able to, they'll still be able to receive messages and calls. Uh, they'll be able to receive calls but, but, and message yes, notifications. But they won't, they won't be, oh, notifications only. So they won't be able to read the messages and they won't be able to respond to the messages. That's correct. There's no such thing as the, the account will be deleted or whatever. No, uh, the account will be active. The chats are going to still be on accessible. Absolutely. So if they, they didn't agree uh, after 8 of February, do they still have a chance to agree and, and use the Absolutely. service again? You know, as I mentioned before, our priority is our users. Um, that is the most important thing for us. So, you know, we will give our users the opportunity to understand the terms, answer their questions most importantly, and accept uh, them. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, their accounts will remain active. We will not take any action. Uh, but also, you know, we announced this mid last week. Um, and one of the most important things we're doing, part of the reason why, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to both of you is to let our users know to not be concerned um, that we're listening to them, we're taking their feedback, and we want to help them uh, make sure that they get comfortable with what it is that we're trying to do. Okay, so the, the question on the street is that uh, what, WhatsApp is selling our data, uh, after, okay, if, if you agree to these terms and conditions, there's a lot of speculation that's going out, out, uh, out there. And obviously, competitors are, are, are trying to capitalize on, on, on this as an opportunity. So now, is, is WhatsApp selling data? Uh, why does WhatsApp gather so much of information compared to what your competitors are doing? Uh, and can people, after the terms and conditions, the new terms and conditions apply, uh, can anybody now see what, what's going on uh, in my chat on WhatsApp? Uh, all very good questions, and I understand the concerns that they're saying. You know, the first thing let me say, WhatsApp's DNA is privacy and security of our users. That comes first, that always has come, for, uh, come first, and we continue to, uh, to respect that, and that is what WhatsApp is all about. Privacy is our DNA. And we do a lot of work to support the security of our users. Uh, you know, simply put, right, you share some of your most important personal moments, your work moments, um, and we respect that. And that's why we built the product. And our commitment to providing end-to-end -end encryption, which is the leading technology today, um, security technology for messages and calls by default, doesn't change. There are absolutely no changes to that. Um, I also want to be very clear, um, Amin, that WhatsApp cannot see your messages or your calls, neither can Facebook. And we do not keep logs of who you're messaging or um, So that information cannot be shared. You know, the other interesting thing, you know, I also want to make sure people understand is WhatsApp actually collects very minimal data. Um, so, for example, when you register for a WhatsApp account, um, you know, you are, you have your phone number. That's how you register for an account, yeah. uh, your name, um, the day you register for your WhatsApp account. Um, some people share profile pics, some people don't. Uh, we know your IP address. Uh, so really the information that you share with WhatsApp is very minimal because WhatsApp is a private intention product. Mm -hmm. So by default, when we built the product, we built it so that people have to share very minimal data. Now, to your question, what do we do with that? It actually helps us provide your survey. So, you know, as an example, um, I mean, if you, we know you're based in Malaysia. We know you use this hardware, um, piece of hardware. Uh, we know what version of WhatsApp your phone is running. We might understand through how your app is performing um, and diagnostic that, you know, you might be in a great network where sometimes when you travel, your network is so great. And WhatsApp's product principles are all about reliability, simplicity, and privacy. 
So by knowing the minimal data that we know about you, it's really about performance and diagnostic that helps us provide this. Um, and yes, we do collect a bit more data than um, you know, Signal, for example. Um, interesting fact, um, Signal and WhatsApp actually use the same end-to-end encryption protocol. <laughs> uh, both of them are you know, the industry standard and the best um, encryption uh, protocol. Uh, so I want people to understand that. So um, does that mean the sorry, I have to interrupt you. Does that mean the open source encryption that's used by Signal? Does that mean WhatsApp and Signal is open source in terms of the encryption? Uh, yes. So WhatsApp uses Signal's um, encryption protocol. Ah, and um, okay, that changes and, the dynamics. That changes yeah. the dynamics. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. The additional thing I will add is you know the data that we collect not only helps us provide you, you know, reliable service, um, you know, but because as you can imagine, you know, on WhatsApp, billions of people are sent, we have 2 billion people, users around the world, rely on WhatsApp, um, especially over the past year, as the pandemic has taken a toll on people's lives. So, you know, people have relied on WhatsApp to, um, to stay in touch with family and it's been a lifeline to people, people as well. Um, the additional thing WhatsApp does with the information that we do have is, you know, you have the ability to report chat. You have the ability to block users. Um, what it does is it helps us keep WhatsApp um, safe and secure. Um, you know, if someone is sending you um, spammy messages, um, if someone is sending you scams, you know, we give the ability for users to report them so that we can take action and make our product even better. I guess for me, I, I when I've spoken to him and the explanation that that comes uh, from, from from a person that actually works in that, it's 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 reassuring. But what what people can see visually doesn't endear itself to what you're saying. So, for example, if you go into the um the thing that you shared, Alex, the the, the RS forty, the privacy, the privacy details in the app store. Like so, so when, yeah. you, when you when you downloaded an app uh, on App Store, for example, so Apple is really good at showing you what data is being accessed. So if if somebody would have taken this and said, okay, look, this is what WhatsApp is 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 uh, is um, collecting. collecting, and this is what uh, Telegram is collecting, and this is what uh, Signal is collecting. So the one that collects the least amount of data is Signal. Uh, and then we have Telegram. Uh, I guess Telegram uh, looks at very like uh, basic stuff like location and and and. It doesn't collect location. They only collect contact information, contact and everything by you. Yeah, and then we go to WhatsApp. The WhatsApp has financial info, transaction info, location info, usage data, user usage data. Uh, I mean, obviously you cannot you cannot speak to billions of people and and and. Your explanation and our explanation to, to a lot of people it gets lost in translation uh, and it becomes something else. Sure. So, so visually, that doesn't endear to what you're saying. I mean, is, is it really necessary to have so many things there? So, you know, it's, it's I think, a good question. Um, you know, what we've seen, it's been really interesting, right? You know, over time, you know, WhatsApp is more than a decade old. Uh, the way that people use WhatsApp has changed quite a bit. And the internet and the technology world has changed quite a bit. Uh, you know, for us, for WhatsApp, we've always been led by our consumers. Um, and our consumers have helped us evolve our product. You know, for a long time, that's one of the reasons why we've only had a consumer product, where it was just very simple. Uh, you were able to talk to each other. Uh, you were able to send messages. And over time, we've evolved the product. And as we've evolved the product uh, based on what customers are looking for, we've also had to collect more data for us to be able to provide the services. I think, you know, in this instance, you know, business has been something over the past three years fundamentally changed um, you know, what consumers' expectations are, how they use messaging, um, and what businesses have had to do to adopt to customer needs. So, you know, one thing I will say is, look, it's not about um, them versus us. But I think for us, the most important thing is that people should have a choice in how they communicate. And we think that's good for the world. Uh, imagine where our world would be if we didn't have the choice yeah. uh, to communicate in the way that they're able to do today. And we think it's very common 
for people to have multiple messaging apps on their phone to use it for different purposes. Um, so, you know, what I would tell your users is don't be alarmed um, and, you know, sort of believe rumors. Um, understand, um, of course, you know, yourself, what information you are giving, what information you message uh, people to. This applies not just to WhatsApp in general in the world today. And then think about how you want to interact. Um, I think what people need to understand is they have a lot of control. They can decide when they want to interact, who they want to interact with. Um, and I think that's really critical. Like people should feel empowered and they are empowered. Um, WhatsApp will never force anyone to do something. You know, for some people, right, they might use WhatsApp just to talk to their family. So there won't be any additional information that they're ever sharing or messaging. Um, so I, I do think it's a balance between what some people around the world are looking for and what some people um, may not want. Um, but, you know, the thing that I also want to reinforce is we're not forcing anyone to share anything or, you know, do anything that they don't feel comfortable with. Um, but they are in full control and they will always be. Uh, but additionally, uh, the DNA of WhatsApp and the reason why we've been so successful is we provide a really simple app that's reliable um, and, and secure and people feel safe. That's also, I think, one of the reasons why institutions like healthcare companies and others that deal with um, customers yeah. want to use that. Yeah. Um, so we remain committed to that. And we're learning. You know, look, this is all we're learning. This is not something we want to be done overnight. This has been years of us being very cautious and careful about how we step into the business world. Um, I know you raised ads, Amin, um, but just to be clear, uh, WhatsApp is not in the business of ads. Um, ads is not how we think about growing our business because because of private space that we're creating for people that's mostly one-to-one -one or you know small group conversation. Um, there's no room for um, an ad that you know, you see in other places. Uh, so that's why the way we're looking to make money is through uh, the business API product and helping businesses connect with their customers. I think I think that's that's very good that you mentioned that. For me, it's like it's akin to like having dinner with your family, and then somebody coming and to the table and say, hey, you know, would you like to buy this product? And like. That doesn't work. As an ad, it doesn't work. As a marketer, I don't know why you would want to do that. Because it's very it's it's super intrusive. It's intrusive beyond beyond what I'm comfortable with. I, I don't think I have any other questions. I'd like to say anything else. Yeah, so a couple of questions. Like uh under the new terms that it is pretty expensive. And one of the terms mentioned that uh under the how we use information section, it says that we use information to operate and provide services including providing customer support, making purchases, and the most interesting part is to connect our services with Facebook company products that you may use. A lot of people feel that this opens up opportunity for Facebook to gather information from WhatsApp to improve its services, and the fear is that this could be used for targeted ads. So of what course. does it really mean? I'll, um, and it's a very good question, Alex. Thank you for asking that. Um, so, you know, a few nuances. It's been very interesting you know, over the years, some of the things that customers have demanded and business have also seen a need for on WhatsApp is, um, you know, in the WhatsApp uh, business app, um, you know, you have the ability to create a catalog. So if you're a small business, let's assume I'm running a, a bakery um, and I can create a catalog of different baked items that um, I make. So Alex, if you're my customer, you would say, oh, Cervantes makes these delicious cookies, I absolutely love them. Uh, so you might message me to place an order, to deliver the order. Uh, you might, you know, for example, uh, we don't have the ability for you to make a payment uh, on WhatsApp, um, but, you know, you might make the payment through a different way and let me know that you've made um, the payment. Um, so all of those things are, you know, valuable to the customer and to the business. Now, um, for businesses, what they can do, for example, is um, businesses have the ability to create shops um, on Facebook, on Instagram, and they can link those shops in their WhatsApp profile so that, um, you know, you as a customer can go there, 
um, connect items and ultimately, you know, purchase them. Um, so when we talk about, you know, information um, that is shared, it's really specific to those experiences um, to improve the experience for, for the customer and the business. Um, it does not mean that Facebook takes that information and does um, targeted ads with it. Uh, it actually means for the business, it's an opportunity to understand their customer better and improve what they're able to offer. Um, so in, in very simplistic terms, it's really experiences um, like commerce um, that happen across our platform where you have the same business doing different things. Um, that's where that happens. The other thing we also have is, um, for example, if you're a business um, or a brand um, and you have ads on uh, Facebook, um, it's become really popular, again, driven by customer demand. Uh, you can choose the option to click through a WhatsApp um, conversation um, on these ads. Um, so as a customer, um, you know, you can click on it and it will take you to the business's uh, WhatsApp um, conversation. Um, and you can have a conversation with them. That does not mean Facebook has access um, to that information. All Facebook is able to do is connect the um, the WhatsApp accounts between the customer and the business together. Um, so from a technology perspective, um, you know the new terms allow us to be able to provide those type of services to ease the communication uh, between businesses and customers. But it does not mean Facebook has the ability um, to take that data and do other things. With it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to uh, the privacy aspect of WhatsApp. So as you mentioned, the messages are still encrypted end to end. But there's still a question about storage because WhatsApp doesn't have a unified storage for chats. Like for example, if you're an iPod user, you use iCloud, and if you're using Android, right. you're using uh, Google Drive, and Huawei, you can put right. together. So how secure are those data? On those different yeah, um, you know, look, I think one of the things that, you know, we've seen as the digital world has evolved and as hand phones have become, um, you know, a standard for everyone, um, I think a lot of technology companies are doing a lot of things to really um, care for how they store uh, people's information. So I think this applies to um, you know, iCloud and, um, and Google, you know, as you mentioned, Apple has very high standards, uh, for how they think about encryption and how they think about, uh, privacy. Um, uh, so, you know, we always tell our users, for example, uh, when you, um, do backups, um, the backup actually sits, uh, in iCloud and Google and we secure it. Uh, but, um, you know, we have high standards in how we, um, hold the minimal data that we do, uh, and we encourage and we look to the industry to do the same. Um, but generally speaking, you know, we've heard good feedback uh, from customers that they feel good about sort of where the backup is and that you know, they feel comfortable with, uh, with that. But again, I think it's a matter of the industry staying ahead and staying on top of technology and really offering the best security available to users. That's a responsibility we take very seriously. And I think more and more companies are switching to encryption uh, because that has become the industry standard. Um, Apple, for example, uses encryption as well. Um, so I think it's something we'll continue to see the industry pivot to. So I think all these new features will help businesses because there's more uh, connection between the user account and the business account and makes commerce much easier. But there are people out there who think that I'm really happy with WhatsApp the way it is, and I'm not comfortable with these changes. So, what do you have to say for those users? And are you giving them an option to control the amount of data they can share? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is a really important question, and you know, the first thing I'll tell all users is they're in complete control of the messages that they send and who they interact with on WhatsApp. Um, so, you know, for example. Alex, if you decide um, that you just want to use your WhatsApp to stay in touch with your family, friends, Amin, and your other colleagues, you would never think about messaging uh, a business. But let's say down the road, um, you do come across a business um, service that becomes integral to your life, um, and you change your mind at that point, oh, I will uh, allow this business to be in my contacts. I want to engage with them because it serves your needs. You have the option to do that. Uh, but what's great about, you know, that is 
you can decide whether you want to message the person. A business can never message you. You have to initiate that conversation. And you can decide when you want to end that conversation, uh, the messages. Um, and if you decide, okay, I'm good. You want to block them all together just to be on the same side, you can do that. So, you know, for us, we're giving ultimate control to consumers because different consumers have different needs and consumers also have different needs at different points in their life. Um, so I think the ability to, uh, to, for them to have the option, uh, we think is important, again, based on what consumers have told us. Looking for the future, right? Uh, with this new company, COVID and new party uh, agreements, is there anything new that Malaysians can look forward to in terms of details? Like, are we finally have the ability to check on the desktop without having a phone connected to the internet? <laughs> um, you know, with Malaysia, you know, it's very important that the Malaysians love using WhatsApp um, and we're, we're really, um, you know, pleased with what uh, that we can provide the service. Um, I think, you know, for us, uh, what's been really important, especially with the pandemic, A, offering a stable service. So people can now, you know, do group video calls with up to eight people. As families have, you know, been separated, they can feel like they're still together. Um, the second thing has been for businesses to keep going um, and, you know, helping their customers and for customers to have access to businesses and healthcare services. So that's where our focus has been. Uh, but customers have always led the way. Um, so, you know, down the road, if customers feel like there's this other service that they want to do, um, you know, of course, we would be open to that. Uh, regarding desktop, um, nothing to share at this moment, but it's, it's feedback that we get. So stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Travanti, for your time. I think uh, for me, at least, uh, the, the answers that you provided has shared a lot of light on the situation and, and actually what's going on. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'll be moving away from WhatsApp anytime soon. Uh, what, what do you think, Alex? For me, I'm still sticking on the WhatsApp because WhatsApp is synonymous to like text messages. Who text anymore? At least, at least for Malaysia, most of my contacts are messaging me on WhatsApp. Yeah. So for me, the switch, I don't think it's a viable solution right now. And for me, as what, uh, uh, has said that messages are still encrypted, they're still, uh, not going to serve any ads. For me, these two things are very important to me and good to know that these two will still be continued after the new transformation. All right. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? No, thank you both for, again, giving me the opportunity and your feedback and your thoughts. It's really important. Um, and and um, I'm pleased that you'll continue to use WhatsApp. Uh, but, you know, I'll just say one last word, one last uh, thing, which is WhatsApp will always remain committed to privacy and security of our users. Our users come first. Um, so, you know, we will continue to take feedback uh, and we really appreciate what our users are saying. Um, so again, thank you for giving me the opportunity, uh, but please know that users are our first priority and we remain committed to you very much. All right, thank you very much, Jalen. Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you, take care. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, Alex, so what do you think of, uh, I think, I think Shravanti has explained the situation very well. I, for one, am like not concerned anymore. Uh, what do you think? For me, I, at least she clears the air on a lot of important aspects, like mm. in terms of the encryption, the mm. privacy, that uh, you still enjoy the same end-to-end -end encryption since the beginning. Mm. And I like that that uh, she has assured that WhatsApp will not serve ads mm. onto the platform. So mm. that's something they're not going to do. Yep. So that's good. Mm. And also on concerns about WhatsApp using our data on WhatsApp. Mm. Well, I, I can see where she's coming from. So she explained it clearly that these um, are opportunities for them to improve the experience. Like, for example, if someone has a shop on Facebook, they mm. can click to, to send messages on WhatsApp. Mm. And also for people to deal with business better on mm. WhatsApp as well. Mm. So those things are pretty clear. Mm. Um, and for me, I think... That's the key, the, key, the key takeaway is that you can control what you use on WhatsApp. Mm. So you're going to use it for messaging, just use messaging. Mm. And besides, the additional options are actually optional. Mm. Like for example, sharing your location and all that, mm. those are still standard across. If mm. you don't use it, you can choose not to use it. But I still felt that there should be more control from WhatsApp mm. in terms of how we can share our data. I wish there's like a panel on on a setting somewhere that mm. you can choose, okay, I don't want location data, I want to disable this. I just want purely for messages. 
like a master kill stage. You you can do that for iPhone. Yeah. You can, you can tell iPhone like okay, I don't want notifications. I don't want yeah. location. I don't want. I don't. Need, I, I'm not sure about WhatsApp, but uh, I know for certain apps. Oh, I think it's all across. Like you can tell i uh, iOS that okay, these apps cannot even access the gallery. Correct. Yeah. But I prefer that if there's something inside WhatsApp itself, so at least more transparent. Oh, there's something that she didn't mention during interviews that mm. uh, actually WhatsApp has a feature in settings. Mm. You can actually download the data that they have. Mm. So you can actually download and see what happens. But uh, I re- requested that on my phone. Mm. But so far, I don't get any results because apparently it takes about a few days for mm. them to compile the data and you can download For them it. to throw away the things that that's <laughs> I <don't> suspicious. <laughs> I don't know. So that's, at least it's a good attempt for them to be transparent mm. in that aspect. I think what assured, uh, what is reassuring for me when we spoke to the to Shravanti is that number one, uh, WhatsApp is uh is is still uh, end to end encrypted and that's a big deal because nobody can see the information outside of the encryption right so i i feel safe there uh number two the 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 biggest bomb drop during the the session was whatsapp and signal uses the same encryption technology uh it's not really a i guess it's not a surprise but i mean it it was a surprise for me because the the found the co-founder of WhatsApp is now the founder co-founder of the Signal. co-founder of Signal, uh. So, you know, I I I'm assured there. Uh, I'm assured that you know they're not going to use uh ad, they're not going to drop ads in our chats. So that's fine. A lot of that speculation of people uh, WhatsApp selling your data is not really a concern. But the other thing also is, I I'm. I'm perplexed as to why people have this. People are panicking over this. Like it's something new. Here's the thing with the current economy. Like the way things are being done in terms of businesses, especially with technology and apps. Right, the services are offered to are offered free to you, for a reason. There's no free lunches, guys. Come on, you use Facebook, you use Google, uh, you use um, uh, WhatsApp or even Telegram. Eventually, whatever not not all of your personal data, but information related oh, that's important and that can be used to target you. So your location, when you use the WhatsApp, um, the, the devices the, you use, the devices you use, those things can be used to better target advertisements to you. And you know, it's not just WhatsApp that's doing this, and it's not just Facebook that's doing this. I. I this I, I I don't know lah, and and the other thing is like why? So if people say okay, I need to move to Signal or I need to I need to move to Telegram, how sure are you that Telegram is better in terms of security and privacy, or Signal is better in terms of security and privacy compared to WhatsApp? And like the same goes, if it's free, you're probably the product. <laughs> yeah, if it's that's that that's that that's uh, that's what I wanted to say in terms of the new economy. If 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 it's available for free, it's not because it's available for free to you, but it's you are the product. Like YouTube is free because you're the product. We are our attention actually to be accurate. Our attention is the product. Now, um, to answer this question, will I be moving away from WhatsApp? No, I'm I'm comfortable with WhatsApp. Uh, like uh, Sravanti said, the 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 reason why WhatsApp does not allow more than two hundred people in a group, not like Telegram, is because they want to make it close and private, and and I I, I kind of like like that I like that notion. I agree to that. Um, and you know we we've gotten somebody from WhatsApp to speak to us. I think that means a lot because, uh, that just shows an effort that okay they really want to clear things out. Um, so I don't think I'll be moving to any other platform. I mean I have Telegram, but I don't really use it. Mm-hmm. I know some of the government agencies use Telegram. I guess yeah. the reason why they do that is because. More, more. Uh, it's a more broad user base. There's unlimited number of people that can use Telegram. And it's also a better platform to disseminate information. Yeah. Without any random banter inside the group. Yeah. yeah. So basically, WhatsApp and Telegram does. Uh, they don't really compete against each other because, like you said, Telegram is used to spread messages far and wide to a lot of people. For WhatsApp, you have to like, you know, uh, there's a limited number of groups, and and then WhatsApp also has like really great security and 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 fake news uh preventions like you know the notification if yeah. something has been um forwarded a number of times uh and and you know and if something has been forwarded like this i i i for one don't feel insecure like, using whatsapp yeah for me of course whatsapp there's still a lot of room to improve mm. like for example um 
having the ability to chat on your computer without your phone being connected to the internet that's mm. something that I think everyone wants if you I'm pretty sure you agree with me mm. because something like, like what yeah. Telegram has lah. yeah not like Telegram has like you can work independently mm. without the phone next but you. you know but that that could be a security issue as well having having platform accessible on ha- having your chats accessible on multiple computers could be a security issue and here's the thing you you can't blame the platform for for you yourself not managing your privacy and security properly what what i mean here is that you know if you're not comfortable with sharing pictures or or information on whatsapp then you don't like for example for me uh i know whatsapp is encrypted but when you know sometimes i have to ask for so for 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 pin numbers or passwords or whatever right even when i ask for that and when when the person that's going to give it to me maybe it's my wife uh she's going to share a, a login detail or whatever uh i tell her don't don't type it out or don't don't uh you know don't spell it out send it in another way or or give me a call or something so if if you are like super anal about security and privacy like you say alex the control then the degree the ultimate encryption and security and privacy control is yourself so we are really nearly freely sharing information and then suddenly something like this happens and we don't understand the thing fully but we so freely and really nearly jump and listen to other people to switch it's and, dangerous yeah. true and also on top of that right we also need to be responsible with our devices as well yeah like for example whatsapp you you have the ability to set like a fingerprint or face id uh, protection for your whatsapp account mm. so if anyone steals your phone they open whatsapp you they need to authenticate in order yeah. to see your messages and of course at the same time your phone as well please protect your phones as well enable face id or touch id or fingerprint sensor and don't use like simple yeah, password have difficult people. passwords yeah. yeah uh you know i don't get it like it, it annoys me because like okay I know people who like will not think twice about joining a Facebook quiz or whatever and sharing whatever data, but then they panic over this. I I don't get it lah. So yeah, uh, what do you guys think? Are you guys gonna move away from WhatsApp? Are you already moving away? Are you using Signal now? I'm sure you guys are using Telegram as well. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, we're we're like super keen to find out as well. Um, and if there's any feedback, I'm sure WhatsApp will be watching the show and reading the comments. So if you have any feedback to WhatsApp, share them in the comment section as well. Okay, I just want to take this opportunity to remind everybody we're on podcast as well. So just search for Let's Talk About Soya Chin Chow on any of your favorite podcast plat- platforms and we're there. If you enjoy the show, please do give us a 5-star rating because that helps us uh, get the show to many more other podcast listeners in the podcast universe um if you're watching us on youtube uh thanks for watching uh do give us a thumbs up if you like the show don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and let us know what you think in the comment section below all right guys uh thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later stay safe and take care see ya bye, bye.